Hi and Assalamualaikum. My name is Amira Sakina binti Mustafa. My name is Amira Farisha binti Shahrutin. My name is Nur Fatimah Rana binti Zaid. And my name is Nur Umaira binti Zainul Hanizi. We are from group 3. So our group will be presenting about the system used in public library named chapter 4. I will proceed for the first part of project overview, which is organization background. So, Chapter 4 Public Library was established by Umairah Zainul in 2019. It was located in Section 2 Shah Alam, Selangor. The library will be operating every day from 8 am until 5 pm, except for the public holidays. There are six librarians who work at the library, and each one of them has their own responsibilities. Everyone who have visited our library is allowed to use our facilities. They also can make the book loan service that has been provided by the library. They need to register themselves as a member and pay for RM5 ringgit for the registration fee. For the time period is only 14 days will be given and if they did not return the book within the given time, they will be charged 20 cents per day. Not to mention, the library also provided a free locker to put their own stuff. So next, Chapter 4 Public Library has three floors with average 150 pupils that can be accommodated at one time. The first floor of the library is for the children's zone to ensure their safety as on the first floor, there are two or more security guards. Also, it has a mini playground and a well-designed book section that is suitable for them. For the second floor, this is the area where every reading material, including encyclopedias, newspapers, and books are located. Each one of them is categorized according to their categories to make it easier for the customers to make references. Lastly, on the highest floor, which is a third floor, the library provides computers to anyone who wants to access the internet. In addition, this floor also has a meeting room for discussion purposes. The second one is current system description. Chapter 4 Public Library is currently using manual system in the process of key in and recording all the related data. The librarians must key in every data such as name and phone number for every customer who intend to make a book loan on a piece of paper with their own handwriting. After that, the librarians must keep all the records in the provided file. All of the records will be kept accordingly to their own files. For example, the list of lost book will be kept in the book file and the list of customer who are being fined will be kept in the customer's file. While using current manual system, uh, we have faced some problems in recording data of the books and library user. This is because the process of recording all the required data takes a lot of time. A lot of manpower is also required because the librarian has to check all the files if there is any uncertainty. On the other hand, the system use also causes to get wrong information from users. Since all records are written by different people manually, it makes the information difficult to understand and unreadable by librarians, especially when their handwriting is messy. In another point of view, manual recording also means that a certain amount of paper is required. This causes a lot of space to be used to store all the files. All the recorded data also has no backup which can cause a big problem when one piece of paper is lost. In addition, any paper stored for a long period of time can cause the paper to rot or tear and in turn cause the data to become unreadable. By creating new database, we have obtained six objectives. The first one is to organize data of the books and library users systematically. The second one is to make it easier for the librarian in charge to record and review data. The third is to identify any overdue books written from user. 
And next one is to lessen the amount of expenses used for the library. The fifth one is to ensure less time consumed and manpower used. And the last one is to improve security of users, data and personal info. So that's all for me. I will pass my presentation to Farisha. So next, I will proceed to the business rules and entity relationship diagram part. First one is the list of business rules. So these are the list of Chapter 4 Public Library business rules. First, each customer can borrow one or many books. One librarian issued many books. A librarian charge every customer who is late returning a book. Several books categorized according to its category. A librarian record customer's information before using computer facility. Every customer can donate many books to the library. And the last one is every librarian is paid a salary. So next, this will be the complete entity relationship diagram uh, for the chapter 4 public library based on the business rule before. So here we have five entities which are librarian, customer, book, category and salary. So for each entity, they have their own attributes. For example, for the librarian entity, we have librarian ID, librarian name, librarian contact, and librarian email. So PK uh, represent the primary key, and the primary key for the librarian entity is librarian ID. So the librarian has a relationship with the customer entity, which one librarian can record many customers. Note that the double line here, we read it as one, while the cross feed look like here, we read it as many. So the rest relationship uh, should be one librarian charge many, one librarian charge one customer, one customer can borrow many books, one customer can donate many books, one librarian issued many books, and one book is categorized based on its category. So note that here, uh, the relationship between book and category is the only relationship that have a strong relationship. This is because the primary key of category contains the primary key of its parent entity, which is the book ID. So now let's move on to the data dictionaries. Data dictionaries provide details description of all tables and it contains metadata which at least um, contains all of the attribute names and char characteristic for each table system. So let's just take a brief look about chapter 4 public library data dictionary. First we have the customer table. So, customer has its own attributes, which is cast ID. Cast ID refer to the customer's identification number. For example, A104. It is VACHA and cast ID is the primary key for the customer's entity. So, next, we have the librarian table and its attribute. So, for example, librarian name. Librarian name refer to librarian's name. For example, Mira Izati. Uh, it is Vacha and it is not null. So not null meaning that we can't leave the record as a blank space. And the list goes on for the rest table. So the last one is the relational schema. Relational schema is a textual representation of the database table. So to write a relational schema, each table is listed by its name. For example, here we, we need to write the uh, customer table in front and then we need to write the attributes name in the parentheses. And then the primary key for each table must be underlined. That's all from me. Now let's have Fatin to proceed to the next part. 
Assalamualaikum. Now I will continue our presentation about database declaration 3.0. I will show you our table declaration for all entity. In this case, our supervisor wanted a listing of all customer data. In this customer data, we collect customer ID, librarian ID, book ID, customer age, customer name, customer phone number, customer email, customer loan book date, customer return book date, customer password who are using our computer service. So then, this is our input for the data that we collect from the customer. And this is the sample of output when we create the table of customer. So here you can see there is eight customer data we collect starting from Hana Maisara until Haila Ilyas. Secondly, our supervisor want a list of all librarian data. So we will create librarian table by write the command on IBM DB2. In this librarian data, we collect librarian ID, librarian name, librarian contact, librarian email. Then, this is our input for the data that we collect from librarian. So, here you can see the sample of output from table librarian. We have six librarian in our chapter 4 library. Thirdly, our supervisor want a list of all salary data. So, we have to create table of salary. So, we have to collect their salary data. First, we have librarian invoice number from their check salary, librarian ID, librarian salary, librarian bonus and their total salary. So this is our input from their salary entity. And this is the sample of output from table salary. As you can see here, this is the librarian salary, librarian bonus and their total salary by adding the librarian salary plus librarian bonus. Lastly, our supervisor wanted a list of all category data. So we have to create table of category. In this table of category, we collect category code, book ID, category name, category number and category book. So this is the input for the category data which consists five attributes. So, this is the sample of output for table of category. I will choose one example, which is the book ID is B15217 and the category code for this book is C15 and the category name is novel and the category number is 335C91 and the category book is book and so on. Next, I will proceed with SQL statement. SQL is stand for Statement Query Language. I will show you the first part of SQL statement which is simple SQL queries. In this part, I will show you three examples of query. For the first query, our supervisor need a list of all customer data. So we need to select all the attributes in customer data. And here is the sample of output. Starting with customer ID, until customer password. For the second query, our supervisor need a list of customer ID, name and email. The customer ID should be sorted in decimal sequence. So we have to select customer ID, customer name, customer email from customer table. So this is sample of output. As you can see here, the customer ID arrangement are sorted by descending order starting from A107 until A100. For the last query, which is third query, our supervisor want customer name and their age with their age greater than or equal to 20 years. So we have to select customer name and customer age from customer table. So this is the sample of output. And as you can see here, the customer age consists 20 years and 22 years old. Next, I will proceed with the second part of SQL statement, which is 4.2, retrieving data from multiple table. 
In this part, we have two examples of queries. For the first query, our supervisor wanted a customer ID, customer phone number, book ID, book type, book title and book general of all the book that the customer borrowed. So we have to select customer ID, customer phone number, book ID, book type, book title and book general. So this is the sample of output. I will choose one example from customer ID A100. And she borrowed the book ID A11421 and the book type is fiction and the book title is The Lord of the Ring and the book general is History and so on. Next, I will pass our presentation to Umaira. Now, I will continue our group presentation video by presenting the second query for retrieving data from multiple tables. Here, the situation is for every librarian, list their ID, name, phone number, salary, bonus and total salary that they receive. This means we need to select the librarian ID, librarian name, librarian phone number from the librarian table. We also need to select the librarian salary, librarian bonus and total salary from the salary table. Here, I put the command that we need to write in the IBM DB2. Select L.librarian ID, L.librarian name, L.librarian contact, S.librarian salary, S.librarian bonus, and S.total salary. From librarian L, salary S, where L.librarian ID equal to S.librarian ID, order by S.total salary ascending. And here is the output that we gain. We have library ID, library name, library contact, library salary, library bonus, and total salary, respectively. And the table is arranged from the lowest total salary to the highest total salary. Next, we proceed with the 4.3 scalar function and arithmetic. Query 1. I need a list of the total income, salary and bonus. In the total, assume the unknown bonus to be zero. So the command is, select librarian invoice number, librarian ID, librarian salary, librarian bonus, librarian salary plus librarian bonus as total salary from salary. In this result, we can see that when librarian bonus is null, then the total salary, which is the sum of labouring salary and labouring bonus, is also null. Next, here is the second technique that we also can use. The command is, select labouring invoice number, labouring ID, labouring salary, labouring bonus, labouring salary plus coalesce labouring zero as total salary, from salary. There is a slight difference from the output that we gained from the previous technique. By using this technique, the total salary are not affected and the null labor and bonus are replaced by zero. Next, we proceed with 4.3, column functions and grouping. First, for column functions, the situation is I need the sum of all salaries for labor and ID begins with the letter F. The command is select sum, total salary as sum, from salary, where library ID like F%. The result is derived from the set of rows for which the where clause predicate is true. Here, we get to know that the sum of all salaries for library with ID begins with the letter F is 6,100 ringgit Malaysia. Next is grouping. The situation that we have is I need a listing of total salaries without bonus for all librarian based on their gender F and M. In addition, I want the total spent salaries without bonus for all librarian based on their gender F and M. There are two steps that we can use to solve this query. The first command is select librarian ID, sum, librarian salary as sum 
from salary where library ID in F102, F077, F111, M391, M190, and M789. Group by library ID and order by library ID. And here is the output. This result shows the total salaries without bonus for all librarians based on their gender, which is F and M, which we can see at the first letter of the librarian ID. We can see here that the table are arranged or sorted according to their gender, which is F represented female and M represent male. Next, the second command is select librarian ID sum library salary as sum from salary where library ID in F102, F111 and F077 group by library ID having sum library salary more than 1500 order by library ID and we gain the table of output that shows the total spent salaries without bonus for female librarian that are more than 1,500 ringgit Malaysia. It displays three librarian, which is female, and receives salary exceed 1,500 ringgit Malaysia. Next, we proceed with the last point, which is 4.4 sub-queries or maintaining data. For sub-queries, query 1. We need to know who received the highest basic salary among all the librarian. The command is select librarian ID, librarian invoice number, librarian salary from salary where librarian salary equal to select max librarian salary from salary. And this is the output that we have executed. The table shows that the highest basic salary was received by librarian with ID M391, where the salary received is 2010 ringgit Malaysia. The second query, the case is list, list the customer in Mikhail Anwar's age range that was managed by the same librarian with him. The command that we need to write in IBM DB2 is select librarian ID, book ID, customer age, customer name, customer phone number and customer loan date from customer where customer age and librarian ID in select customer age, librarian ID from customer where customer name equal to Mikhail Anwar. From this result table that we have gained, we get to know that there is none of the customer in Mikhail, Mikhail's age, which is 19, that being managed by the same librarian with him, which is librarian with ID F111. Next, we proceed with maintaining data. The first case that we have is, we need to delete one of our customer info in our system. So, the command that we need to use is delete from customer where customer ID equal to A104 and select all from customer. Here, I insert the old data table and the below one is the recent table that we gain after execute the command. The delete statement have removed the entire row from the customer table. Here, we can see that the row with customer ID of A104 have been deleted and the other's data are remain untouched. And lastly, the second query for maintaining data, the situation is our librarian which is Mira Izati has showed great performance for past month. Thus, her salary was raised by 200 ringgit Malaysia and she will get bonus 100 ringgit Malaysia. We need to list all the salary table after updating her salary and bonus. The command that we need to write in IBM DB2 is update salary, 
set salary, set laborian salary equal to 2000, laborian bonus equal to 100 and total salary equal to 2100. Where laborian ID equal to F102. Just like before, the upper one is the old data table and the below one is the updated table. We can compare that the row salary, bonus and also total salary for labelian with ID F102 have been changed. Before, the labelian have received 1,800 labelian salary, 250 labelian bonus and 2,050 total salary. But after we update the data, the librarian receive 2,000 of librarian salary, 100 of librarian bonus and the total salary received is 2,100 ringgit Malaysia. That's all from us. Thank you for watching our video. Bye!